JBN, we keep you informed. Businesswoman shot dead during home invasion. A 37-year-old businesswoman was shot dead at her home in Westmoreland Friday morning. She has been identified as Carisha Johnson, a resident of Byland Waterworks. About 3 o'clock, Johnson was at home with her common-law husband and 4-year-old child when three masked men broke in and demanded money. The men were ransacking the room when Johnson reportedly pulled a knife and stabbed at one of them. She was shot and died on the spot. The gunmen escaped. Police officer, among four charged with illegal possession of firearm. A police constable is among four men charged with illegal possession of firearm and ammunition in Carindon. Charged are 26-year-old Chevron Downer, a police officer of Pointy Heights District, Old Arbor St. Catherine. 43-year-old Bertram Burrell, a truck driver of Burnt Ground District, Hanover. 33-year-old Kathleen Pennant, a farmer of Burnt Ground District, Hanover. And 33-year-old Tafara Ross, a tractor operator of Bannister District, Old Arbor St. Catherine. Police reports are that about 1 a.m. on Wednesday, July 8, a patrol team signaled a Toyota Pro Box motor car to stop at the intersection of Glenmore Road and Murad Avenue in Maypen Clarendon. They said he complied, after which they searched the vehicle and found a Taurus 9mm pistol with a magazine containing 9 9mm cartridges, another 9mm pistol with a magazine containing 14 9mm cartridges, and two ballistic vests were seized. The men are scheduled to appear before the Clarendon Parish Court on Tuesday, July 14. Electrician charged with assault and illegal possession of firearm. An electrician is scheduled to appear before the court to answer to assault and gun charges following an incident in his community on Tuesday, May 12. Charged with assault at common law and illegal possession of firearm is 44-year-old Glenford Estee of Rosetta Park, Cherry Gardens in St. Catherine. According to the police, about 10.45 a.m. Estee was involved in a dispute with another man when he allegedly brandished a firearm. He reportedly fled the scene but was subsequently arrested. Estee was charged following an interview in the presence of his attorney on Thursday, July 9. Police foiled money heist at Western Union. Two men were arrested after they attempted to pull off a multi-million dollar heist on Thursday night at a Western Union on Hope Road, Kingston 10. According to the police, at about 9.40 p.m., officers responded to reports of a burglary in progress at the financial institution after an alarm was set off at the building. The police said when they arrived, two men were found inside the ceiling with a bag containing various currencies. The police recovered over 1 million Jamaican dollars, U.S. 11,500, Euro 1,010, CI 115, pounds 400, Canadian 1,240. The police said it is believed that a third person escaped with an undetermined sum of money. The identities of the men are being withheld pending further investigations. JN Bank employee pleads guilty to forgery in $1.6 million case. 26-year-old Jamaica National Bank employee Sheldon Durant has pleaded guilty to forging documents to swindle over $1.6 million from customers. Durant, who was employed to the Lucy branch, is to be sentenced on August 31 when he returns to the Lucy Parish Court. The bank says the employee forged signatures on several withdrawal slips in order to access customers' money. The court has requested a social inquiry report ahead of sentencing. Woman killed, seven injured in Westmoreland crash. A woman was killed and seven people injured in a three-vehicle crash on the retreat main road in Westmoreland on Wednesday. She has been identified as Kimon Mary, a hotel receptionist of Little London, Westmoreland. The seven people sustained minor injuries and were treated and released from hospital. The crash, which occurred sometime after 8 a.m., involved a Toyota Voxy, which was being used as a taxi, a Honda Civic, and a Suzuki Grand Vitara. It is not clear how the accident occurred. It was reported that the Honda Civic was traveling from Negril to Savlamar, while the Toyota Voxy and the Suzuki Grand Vitara were traveling in the opposite direction. The Suzuki Grand Vitara, in which Miss Mary was traveling, overturned on impact. Man imprisoned without trial for over 20 years freed. One week after being granted bail, Abraham Lawrence, the mentally ill man who was imprisoned for over 20 years, yesterday morning walked out of the St. Elizabeth Parish Court a free man. 
49-year-old Lawrence was admitted into the custody of the Department of Correctional Services in 1999 after he was arrested in relation to an altercation where he allegedly threw stones at a group of men in Huntley Castle District, St. Elizabeth. A police service vehicle was damaged during the altercation. He was declared unfit to plead and remained in prison until a week ago when he appeared in the St. Elizabeth Parish Court in Black River where he was granted bail and released into the care of his family. Senior Parish Court Judge Amory Granger at 10.07 a.m. freed Lawrence after reviewing reports from a psychiatrist and a probation officer which indicated that he was not fit to plead. It was a good report. He needs to follow up with the doctor. Take him to the hospital or see a private doctor, Granger told Lawrence's brother who was present in court. She also instructed that the probation officer is to visit Lawrence regularly at home. I feel 100%. I feel good. It's a good moment to have him at home after he was incarcerated. So I feel happy, said Llewellyn Lawrence, shortly after his brother's release. 320 pounds of ganja seized. Two men arrested in St. Catherine. Over 300 pounds of ganja were seized and two men arrested by detectives assigned to the Narcotics Division in Helsha Heights, St. Catherine, on Friday, July 10. Reports are that about 5.30 a.m. a joint police-military operation was carried out in the community, which resulted in the seizure of 320 pounds of compressed ganja wrapped in bags. The drug has an estimated street value of Jamaican $3.5 million. The identities of the men are being withheld pending further investigations. The St. Catherine South Police says it will continue to pursue and disrupt criminal activities to include the use of the Hellshire coastline as a hub for the illicit drugs for guns trade. St. Catherine cop on corruption charge gets bail. A St. Catherine policeman who is alleged to have accepted $30,000 from an accused man to drop an assault charge against him has been granted bail in the sum of $150,000 with surety. Constable Marlon Campbell was ordered to return to the St. Catherine Parish Court on October 20. He was arrested and charged this week with breaching the Corruption Prevention Act. Attorney at law Aisha Rob Cunningham, in making the bail application, told Parish Judge Monique Harrison that Campbell was not a flight risk. It is alleged that in September 2018, the complainant paid Campbell the money to drop the case against him. Sometime after, the complainant reported the matter to the police and the statements were collected and sent to the Director of Public Prosecutions for a ruling. The policeman was stationed at the Central Village Police Station. He met the complainant in Spanish Town in 2018 and allegedly collected the money to drop the case. Returning residents flouting COVID-19 protocols in Trelawney. Dr. Diane Dale, Medical Officer of Health at the Trelawney Health Department, says since Jamaica reopened its border, the police and health officials have been kept busy following attempts by people determined to attend funerals shortly after arrival. We have had to actively with the police prevent people returning residents from going to funerals because they decide to be defiant of the orders and are very explicit to the public health officers and the police officers of their intent, deal revealed. We are making observations that there are some of our returning residents from the United States of America, which is currently a very high-risk area by virtue of the upturn of COVID-19 infection outbreaks in that setting. And they return to our shores today with a view to go to a funeral tomorrow or the day after. It is important that we all acknowledge that if such is allowed, risk for widespread community outbreak will be significant, she said. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has mandated that individuals who have returned home or are visiting the island should remain in quarantine for 14 days to guard against the spread of COVID-19. Dr. Dalo argued that some people were behaving as if the danger of spreading the virus has been averted, was prompted to remind residents that since the reopening of the borders, there has been a spike in important cases of COVID-19. We must acknowledge that with the opening of the country's borders, as you would have been seen from the press releases from the Ministry of Health and Wellness on a daily basis, we are having growing numbers of imported cases of COVID-19, and so the risk of infection has actually heightened. So it is important 
that we continue to practice and encourage others to practice the infection prevention and control measures that we have been communicating for the longest while to include the wearing of masks, she urged. She was speaking at the monthly meeting of the Chiloni Municipal Corporation in Falmouth. The medical officer of health noted that health officials are not only making a concerted effort with the support of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, to ensure that individuals conform to the quarantine measures, but also to zero in on mass gatherings, noticeably at the up at grave digging exercises. Of course, the mass gatherings, whether it is grave digging, which is bigger these days than anything else, is another concern that we continue to monitor and work with the police to help to dispel such gatherings when they are observed. So it is important because some of these things we would have been doing for a few months, but at this time they are even more important. And so it is not a time for us to be complacent and to fall off in terms of ensuring the adoption to some of these measures, Dr. Dale said. She expressed that the health department will be working more closely as well with the pastors, officiating ministers, who will be working with families for such events to ensure that consideration is given even as they plan with families for the hosting of such events. I know many of us are parts of church families. Many of us participate in the funeral services in our communities. It is important that your support be lent to urging community members to be mindful of the threat posed if we are not paying enough attention to the quarantine measures that are ordered by law. The same way mask wearing is mandated by law in public spaces, yes, the quarantine measures are by law, Dale insisted. So I just pause to urge us to support the effort to have persons maintaining quarantine measures. Persons have opportunities to decide to come home and to make plans even for funeral arrangements and all of that, making allowance for the quarantine period, she continued. She also implored members of the local authorities to lead from the front by adhering to the COVID-19 safety protocols. For his part, Chairman of the Chiloni Municipal Corporation, Councillor Colin Gajroth thanked the Ministry of Health and other stakeholders for their efforts against the COVID-19 spread. Up to July 8, there were 751 COVID-19 cases confirmed in Jamaica, five of which were recorded in the parish of Trelawney. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.